Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I'm here today to talk to you about a brand new whiskey release. It's not uh, a brand new distillery, but this is their very first single malt whiskey release. This is the Herak uh, from the Isle of Harris Distillery, or just the Harris Distillery. Um, and Herak is a Scottish Gaelic for uh, basically an islander from Harris. Um, now, I am going to do a little bit of a rant now. Um, so let's sound the rant klaxon. Um, and the reason I want to do a rant is, as an independent retailer, very much kind of my whole reason for opening the shop was to sell bottles to customers that I had tried, that I knew what they were like, and that I thought were good enough to sell to my customers. So I try everything that I bring in. That is, I suppose you call it a USP, although I'm not the only one that does it. I'm gonna put this here before I drop it. So I rely on the support of brands to send me samples, and it only needs to be a miniature, but it does help to sell to customers as well. You get people coming in and going, what's this like? I want something a little bit different, what's it like? I can ex try and explain what it tastes like till the cows come home, but again, it's my personal opinion, my personal taste, my personal preferences. Excuse the noise out there, there's some scaffolding going down. Um, so it helps to have a little bit for a customer to try, to go, oh yeah, I like that. It's amazing the amount of sales that you get by customers trying them going, oh yeah, actually that's really nice, and then buying the bottle because they know that they're going to enjoy it. There are too many places out there that just put bottles on the shelf, and if you ask them what it's like, they'll go, I don't know, I've not tried it. Or they'll just rattle off what's on the back of the bottle or go, uh, yeah, well, it's probably really good because other people like it or it sells well or whatever. That's not what I'm about. I'm all about, I try it. If I think it's good value for money, and I've done other videos where I talk about value compared to cheap, but if I think it's good value for money in context of the market and other things that are similar to it, if I think it's good quality, if I think it's well made, if I think it's honest, if I think it's got integrity, and I believe in that product, then I will sell it to my customers. And the only way I can do that properly is by trying the damn thing myself. And this was a problem that I had when I was working with Gordon McPhail, is we were trying to sell bottles that were thousands of pounds, and the people that were actually selling it had no idea what it was like. So you are literally basing it on trust. And there is some trust involved in some cases, but you need to build that trust by already showing me that you've got the integrity, that your liquid is already really good. Now, the problem that I have is I was offered an allocation of the Hera. I already sell the Isle of Harris gin. I tried it before I got it in. I was really impressed with it, and that is why I sell it. And because I'm selling it, they said, you know, we've got our new single malt coming out. Would you like to sell some? Yes, I would. Am I able to try it? Oh, no, because of the limited allocation of the liquid, we're not able to send samples out. I'm not looking for a full bottle. Sometimes I ask for samples, and I get sent a full bottle. Now, that helps because I get to try it, I get to do a video of it, and then I've got loads to be able to share with customers to sell those. Or I put them in uh, miniatures and do decanters and then do miniature packs to enable people to try them. But I only need a 5CL miniature, sometimes not even that, a 30ml miniature, one of these like tiny little bottles, to allow me to try it to go, yes, that's really good. Or I know how to sell it if somebody comes in and says, what's this like? I can say, I know what it's like because I've tried it. It's like this, it's like that. Sometimes I will turn around and stop somebody actually buying a bottle because of what they told me that they like, they don't like that sort of thing. They pick something up and I go, I don't actually think you're gonna like that. If they try it, they can then go, oh no, actually you're right. If they don't, they kind of have to rely on me having tried it. So if I've not tried anything, how am I supposed to sell it? So basically I've taken the decision to bring the allocation in because I like Harris Gin, and the story that I had behind this was quite interesting at the time, but I've had to open one of the bottles from my stock, and I now need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of it. I might put it into miniatures, because there are so many people after this bottle that just wanna try it. I might have to decant the rest of the bottle and save a little bit for customers. I'm already sold out. Uh, straight away, I'm sold out. The allocation has gone already. Um, but there might be people that do still want to try it, or I might just have to decant them into miniatures and sell them as miniatures to enable people that want to try it, that can't get their hands on a bottle, to be able to try it, because some people out there just want to see what it's like. So this is a message to, if anybody is watching from Harris, you've kind of dropped the ball already. 
uh, because if you'd have been able to give me a sample, A, that would have meant I could do the video a lot earlier, and B, it enables me that, to evidence that you believe in your product. What also didn't help was the fact that they made this available on the distillery's website and at the distillery for two weeks before. Now, when they first sent out the information about the, um, about the whiskey, they said retailers around the world and across the country will have this date to sell the bottles, but we want to give the people of Tarbot, which I'll go on to in a second, the people of Tarbot to be able to try the whiskey themselves. Fair enough. Absolutely get that because it's very much a community-based distillery and they're very much about the local people. So make it available just at the distillery. So if people do want to take the trip to the distillery from around the country to go and get their bottles, not a problem with that at all. But if you are then selling it through your website nationwide, that's kind of a kick in the teeth to retailers like me and other independent retailers that have got to sit there and wait for two weeks for customers that might have got the bottle from me as you know, a regular customer to turn around and go, oh, I already got it because I got it from the, uh, the distillery. Yeah, they, they delivered it to me. So I'm now looking at the allocation that I've got and going, am I going to sell all of this? And I'm going to have to pay for it. And I don't really want it sat as with most things. Stuff that's sat on the shelf that's not selling is costing me money and it's costing retailers money because we've already paid for it. Yes, there's credit terms and things like that, but most credit terms go a maximum of 30 days. So again, I'm watching all these sales go out and all these people on, on uh, social media going, oh, I've got my bottle from the distillery and everything like that. And there's myself and a couple of other retailers that I know that we talk to each other and we kind of see how each other are doing going, uh, well, I hope there's, you know, I hope there's enough people out there that still want to buy some from us if there's any left, you know, the, how many of the distillery got anyway rant over it just was a little bit frustrating and he's making independent retailers jobs a little bit harder however i do have this so before i tell you what this tastes like and up front this is batch seven of they've got eight batches as well but i'll go into that in a bit before i tell you what this tastes like let me give you some background information as i do with all my other videos about the isle of harris distillery how it was set up and the makeup of this particular whiskey Initially founded as business in 2007 by Anderson Burr Bakewell, the Isle of Harris Distillery, which is situated in the capital town of Tarbert, didn't officially start production until September 2015, and a few weeks later their first product, a soft gin in a highly distinctive bottle, was launched to the public. Bakewell, an Anglo-American musicologist, cares deeply about the island, and the venture aims not only to provide long-term employment opportunities, but also provide a focal point for the local population to rally around. It's often dubbed as a social distillery, with spirit made for the community by the community. Simon Erlanger, who had previously worked with Diageo and Glenmorangie, was brought on board as managing director to lead the operation. Herrick translates from Scottish Gaelic as a Harris Islander, or native of the Isle of Harris, and is the first single malt whisky from the distillery. 100% Scottish barley is used, and eight batches have been released in quantities of around 13,000 bottles each, with the marriage of casks being overseen by Chief Blender and Herrick, Shona MacLeod, who herself has been mentored by Dr Gordon Steele, who's well known within the industry for his expertise on flavour profiling. The whisky is a minimum of four years old, and maturation takes place in a combination of first fill ex bourbon casks, sourced from Buffalo Trace and Heaven Hill, alongside ex Oloroso and ex Fino sherry barrels. A small amount of peated barley is also used to introduce a slightly smoky element with a phenol level of around 12 to 15 ppm. Isle of Harris the Herrick has no colour added, no chill filtration takes place, and it is bottled at 46% ABV. Okay, so first things first is I want to talk about the packaging because it's a really impressive piece of packaging. So obviously the Isle of Harris gin, beautiful bottle, and I was expecting actually it to be the same. It's sort of similar. It's obviously a lot stumpier. It kind of has this, this slight indentation, particularly on that side. There's a very slight indentation, almost like you can put your thumb in it to pour it, but really, really nice. And it comes in this very, very fancy box. But word of warning, if you do manage to get your hands on this, or you've got a bottle and you've not opened the box yet, be warned, because, let me get this back in here. There is, you know, I'm gonna try and show you here. So this bit where the fold is, it looks like it just pings open. 
It's not magnetic. There's actually a very, now this is one for a customer that I haven't sent out yet. So I'm going to have to be very careful on this. What you kind of need to do is slide your thumb in there and push just above where the little booklet is. I'll show you the booklet in a minute. And the reason for that is you kind of need to push in order to pop it out. There we go. I've got to be very careful with this because I did this by mistake when I opened mine, didn't realize, opened my tasting bottle, and then uh, a customer came in and purchased theirs, and I, she went to open it to put, uh, take a bottle out and have a look at it, and did exactly the same thing. So on here is a little square of cardboard, and that slots in there, right? So that is what's holding it. It's not a magnet, it's not a popper, it's not a button, it's not anything like that. It's this square of cardboard that kind of just slots in but what I would recommend you do is you slide your thumb in kind of between the bottle and the box when you get it open to open it because it's a little bit tight in there, which is why it's holding it. I'm going to put this, oops. Oh, and the other thing, because that's just flown off as well. They also put a placemat in it. So inside is a little booklet and there is also a placemat. Now, ingeniously, the placemat is what the bottle sits on. So it's just like that, but it's just loose. So if you're not aware that it's there, and you take the bottle out, this just flies off all over the place. So I'm gonna try and put this in on my leg. I'm not gonna be able to do this showing you without dropping it. So that, uh, that folds over there like that. That kind of holds the bottle in. It slots in a little bit there. And then it folds over and over. And then that goes in there. And that's this is where that little cardboard square goes in. Now, I'm gonna push that back in there and I'm gonna put that on because this is for a customer. I'm gonna pop that there, put that on. And the reason I say be very careful is this is my tasting bottle. This is the one that I've already opened, is if you pull this out, what can happen is that it just rips off. That is just glued on. So I'm gonna take this bottle out. And that is the little square of cardboard that's still stuck in there when I pulled it off, it just pulled it off on the glue. So what the problem now is that I kind of have to stick it back together because it's ripped off on the glue. And this happened with this customer that, that did, opened hers while I was with her, not the bottle, just the box. It's now just loose. It's now just flappy. And this is kind of a bit, you know, wobbly and everything like that. Not ideal, not ideal. But like I say, if you do get, uh, if you do get a bottle, you get placemat, and you also get a little booklet inside, which gives you a little bit of information about the distillery, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of the whiskey, as already mentioned, there were eight batches uh, of around 13,000 bottles, all of which are apparently potentially slightly different. So again, not ideal. Great for collectors um, because there's going to be people out there that want all eight. Um, however, there are also going to be retailers that just get a certain batch, like I did, which is batch seven. And I don't know how big the differences are. Now, it would have been asking a lot for Harris to send a sample, 5CL sample of all eight in a pack. That would have been really cool, but that is, if you're sending that out to retailers and stuff, that is quite a lot. I've no doubt they probably went to influencers and whiskey YouTubers and everything like that. Not the people that are actually selling it, but the people will just talk about it and say it's amazing, so they keep getting sent free stuff. Another mini rant. That's for a separate subject entirely. But here is the bottle. Here is the one that I've opened. I've had a little, little wee nip and I was quite relieved that it was actually very, very good because my fear was that this was going to be actually a bit rubbish. It's a bit of a style over content, which is always the case, which is why they're not giving samples out because it's not very good. But that is not the case. So this is batch seven and it does say on the top, don't know if you'll be able to pick that up, that's the code that's on there in terms of batch numbers and also the year of release. So this is first release, batch number seven. So we've got this three cast makeup. Now, unfortunately, it's one of these really wide lipped ones. So doing a delicate pour is not easy because you get this dribble down the side as well. So the bottle looks great, but in terms of practicality, not ideal. 46%, we've got Fino, we've got, uh, what have we got? Uh, Heaven Hill and Buffalo Trace uh, ex bourbon casks that are first fill, and then we've got Fino and Oloroso sherry casks. We do have a bit of peated barley in here as well. So it'll be interesting to see how it stands up against the likes of Brasse and Ardna Merkin. We've got quite a few new distilleries that are using an element of peated barley, uh, but not going full on 
um, in terms of going that hefty Isla style, but they're doing some fantastic work with this amalgamation of smokiness and other flavors. Be interesting to see how the Fino comes through as well. So on the nose, lovely, soft, slight, slight sweetness. Now the Isle of Harris gin's quite sweet as well. It's one of the sweeter gins, which I think is why I like it. I'm a bit of a sucker for sweeter. And you know, most people tend to err towards the sweeter side. But there is a nice kind of like almost barley sugar note on here, along with a very soft smokiness. That's like a very soft, sweet barbecue note. There's a touch of bonfire in there. It's a bit like a... Um, it's got the sweetness of something slathered in barbecue sauce, maybe like ribs in barbecue sauce, but it's rather being cooked on a, like a coal bonfire, a, a coal barbecue. It's actually kind of above a uh, an actual wood bonfire. But it's a little bit in the distance. It's got little touch elements. It reminds me a little bit of a, very, a soft lachette. But there's like barley sugar sweetness in there too. There's a, not floral note, but there's a, a light sweet note that kind of barley sugar that that's what i keep coming back to is is this sweetness but it's a little soft but it's a light, very slightly floral too as well as dancing with that smoke it's gentle it's soft there's a nice complexity to it and that really carries through on the palate as well nice mouthfeel quite rich quite silky there's a slight oiliness to it. The smokiness is a little bit more pronounced. It's a little bit drier than it feels on the nose. That barley sugar element dissipated a bit. The bonfire is now, yeah, it's bonfire smoke, but it's a little bit drier. There's less of that kind of sweet barbecue sauce feel that was going through. Um, but again, really well balanced. Again, on the sweeter side, we're getting a little bit more kind of like butterscotch, salted caramel. There's a softness to it. And I think that's the texture. There's a there's quite a silky feel in terms of the mouthfeel that's working really well with that soft smokiness too. It's not as coastal as Ardnamurkan. It's not as red berry as Rase but it does have a lot of complexity to it. It feels like it's just lacking something, just a little bit of weight, not much. It's a really, really good whiskey. It's really impressive. It doesn't, it feels like it just needs one more little turn of the dial, one more little element in there. And it feels like it's a weight, a depth issue. It, it's quite light. And I think a lot of people will be, not a lot of people, there will be some people that will be trying it going, oh, it, it's, it's a bit wishy-washy. It's not wishy-washy. There's a lot of complexity going on in here. And I, it's either the mouthfeel needs to be a little bit richer or there almost needs to be, maybe it's the pheno sherry element that is lightening it slightly. There is, there is a sweet nuttiness to it as well, which I'm fairly certain would be the pheno cask element. There's a slight kind of praline note to it. And I wonder whether you've got ex-bourbon casks, you've got Fino Sherry, you've got casks that will give you quite a lighter element. And then you've got the Oloroso that will give you that classic sherry flavor. Whether something like a PX or a Port or a Red Wine or something, a cask element that's gonna give you just a bit of weight and a bit of depth, like a darker flavor to it. I wouldn't necessarily say it needs more smoke in it, peated barley, more smoky element in there. I think the smokiness is actually really, really well balanced with this light flavor profile. It just feels like it just needs a little touch of something that's a bit heavier just to lift it in the middle. It's got a lovely finish. It's brilliant on the nose and it's a really nice start and it just dips a little bit in the mid palate. And it just feels like there's just one little note, but what a start, you know? Considering the packaging, the bottle, everything like that, the danger was that this was very much gonna be style over content. It was very much gonna be like, oh, there's not a lot to it. It's a bit light, it's a bit... I love the smoky element in there. I love that sweet barbecue sauce, which 
admittedly is more on the nose than it is on the palate, but it's still there. I love this sweeter note. This is a very, very easy drinking whiskey. This is a very good introduction for people that want to find out about peated whiskey, what smoke can do to a, a, a palate without going too intense. I'd really like to see a cast strength version of this as well. Um, I think this has definitely got a lot going for it. It'd be fascinating to see how it progresses. It'd be very, very interesting to see what they do over time with, you know, as Lockley have done with their seasonal releases and things like that, being able to show how you can mold that flavor profile into different areas, be it cask finishing or cask strengths or anything like that, taking it in slightly different directions while maintaining a character. As I've said before, one of the things I love about Lockley is it has a characteristic of its own that I've now got to the stage where I can go, yes, that's Lockley whiskey. This is their first release, so I can't say categorically, right, so this is going to be Harris's house style, character, identity as a whiskey. But there is a lot going on in there, and I, I'm wondering if it's going to be that slightly sweet, slightly barley sugar, salted caramel, butterscotchy, softer side with a thread of smoke coming through it. Because the gin is slightly on the sweeter side as well, that's sort of where my gut instinct says this is where Harris is going to go. And if that's the case, brilliant, because that separates it from Rase, from Arden Merck and from Lockley, and he's actually really, really enjoyable to drink. So yes, the Herach, uh, really, really impressive. Impressive packaging, although it kind of has its faults. I, I, like I say, be careful. Um, really, really impressive whiskey, outside of the fact that I've had to basically take one of the bottles off my shelf in order to be able to do this video and so that I can tell people what it's like. Um, Keep an eye out. I've got no stock left. I'm getting people that are emailing me going, can you let me know when it's back in? Keep an eye out because there's a good chance that a chunk of this bottle is gonna go into uh, either a sample pack or individual uh, miniatures to enable people that just wanna try it, can actually try it. Um, because as with anything that's first released or inaugural or blah, 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 it'll be already on the auction site going for a ridiculous amount of money. But there we go. So uh, check the website, www.spiritspecialist.com. Keep an eye out for that. Um, that's me done for this video. I shall see you at the next one. Cheers. Cheers.